Hey everyone, so it's Hoth and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be setting up my Mabon altar. <music> Now if you guys have been on this channel for a while, you will know that every single Sabbath I set up a Sabbath altar to represent the season or the time of the year that we're entering into so that I can really bring that energy into my home. And this season is no different, so today we are going to be setting up my Mabon altar. Now the day I'm setting this up is the 20th of September and Mabon starts tomorrow. So I am a little late on setting up this altar. It feels as though Lamas was just a week or so ago and it feels like Samhain is like two days away when actually Mabon falls in between the two. So hopefully the altar turns out all right and hopefully you enjoy the video. As always, this is gonna be partially a time lapse of me setting up the altar. So hopefully you will enjoy it and let's get on with setting up the altar. Thank you. 
So the base of this altar is the beautiful red velvet altar cloth. Now I've used this cloth a lot. I think I used it on my last Mabon altar as well. And I really enjoy the high contrast between the red of the cloth and the green of the fake ivy that goes around the edge of it. Now, unfortunately it is fake ivy. I don't have any real ivy to put on this altar and I have a tendency to make do with what I've got. And I have some fake ivy and I like the way it looks. So I'm gonna work with it until I can get myself some real ivy. Now the top portion of this altar, I am using to focus on the death and rebirth aspect of this time of year. Especially where I live in England, we are really seeing that the leaves are starting to turn, autumn is really, really kicking in now, and it does become this period of time of death and rebirth. So I have the skull on here as representation of that. Some of you might recognize it, it's actually the skull from my filming area that has been propped up rather sneakily on a brass candlestick holder, because it actually does doesn't stand free by itself because it has had the back taken off it so that it can hang on the wall. Luckily it's not too noticeable, although you can see the little ring holder at the back just peeking out of the back of the skull. I then have my wand and my athame on this altar. These are pretty common things that I do have on altars, especially during the festivals that I find the energy is quite practical. It's very physical. And so I like having these physical items on the altar that represent active work. Now the crystals that are on the top portion of this altar are all surrounding the idea of protection. So as we're getting closer and closer to Samhain, I am finding that spirits and spirit interactions are increasing as the veil is getting thinner and thinner and thinner. And although I do have a lot of spirit interactions anyway, I do like having some extra protections during this time of year, mainly because you don't want someone unwanted coming into your space and disturbing you. So the top portion is all about protection, death and rebirth. The bottom portion of the altar is considerably different and is a lot more chaotic. There's a lot of stuff going on here which might not make much sense to anyone other than me. So I'll try to explain it as best as I can. So the far right, we do have my color changing Himalayan salt lamp on a wooden slab. Now this is on all of my altars, mainly because this space where my Sabbath altar is set up is most of the time almost completely dark. It's a very dark area of my living room. The only time it's ever bright is during the hour that I managed to film this footage. The rest of the time, it's pretty dark. So I like having the color changing lamp just to bring a little bit of extra light into this area. It also helps to bring lots of positive energy into the space and to clear out stale energy. Because I do have a lot of spirit interactions and there are spirits that live within the home that I don't want to disturb, I don't do full house cleansings. I will do personal cleanses, I will cleanse certain items and objects as I need to, but I don't cleanse the house because I don't want to disturb any of the resident spirits that I really don't want to disturb. This is their home too. So I have the salt lamp to not cleanse the space, but to give it a bit of an energetic shake up sometimes to make it so that the energy isn't quite so stagnant. In the center of the altar, we have one of my goddess statues. This is my gold and green statue, and she is currently holding a tiger eye sphere. Now, all of the crystals on the bottom portion of this altar are designed for amplification, positivity, happiness, and abundance. Now, I have to admit, Autumn is not my favorite season. I do enjoy Halloween, but I do prefer summer over autumn. So I find that having some positive, bright, energetic crystals on the altar really helps to boost the positive energy in the space. So the tiger eye is designed to bring positivity, abundance, good fortune, creativity, all that good stuff. And then the other crystals, we have some clear quartz to amplify the energy. We have some lapis lazuli, some green aventurine, some sardonyx at the back. We've got some malachite, citrine, pyrite. We've got a little bit of everything kind of dashed around the altar in different places. As always, my angel aura amethyst heart is at the front. I love this heart. I got it as a Christmas gift. I'm not sure if it was last year or the year before. Honestly, time is blending together. And I absolutely love keeping it on this altar. It's just a reminder of that. Plus it has some really nice energy. 
And then lastly, on the far left, we do have a golden hair statue. Some of you that got my September mystery box may well recognize this little fella. Now, although the hair isn't necessarily a traditional symbol of Mabon, I like using it as a symbol of interconnectedness with the earth. Hairs are really, really commonly found within pagan mythos and within pagan stories and history. And also I like using them as a representation of cyclical energy. So that is on the altar for that purpose. But also those within the Southern Hemisphere are currently celebrating Ostara. And although I am not, this is a little homage to those who are celebrating Ostara because hairs are a very popular symbol within that celebration. So that's the altar all finished and all done. So that is the altar all set up and finished. What do you think? I actually really, really like it. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel having the skull at the top, but I actually think it looks really, really nice. And if you didn't notice, the skull actually usually lives up here. But because it is September and it's the start of spooky season, uh, I have decided to put my pumpkin back up here again. So normally the pumpkin lives here but I've replaced the spot with one of my goddess statues. The skull is on my altar and now Mr. Pumpkin can be up here again. So I actually really like having skulls on altars, especially at this time of year because it is entering into the darker times. We're starting to wind down crop production. We're starting to wind down life because now the days are starting to get much, much shorter. The nights are really, really creeping in. And so for me, I tend to add skull imagery onto altars anywhere from Lamas, through to Samhain, but this year it is going to be on my Mabon altar. So I'm actually really, really chuffed with how it turned out. For anyone that is gonna wonder and that is gonna question it, all of the skulls and the animal remains that I do own are all ethically sourced. I do not, under any circumstances, condone unethical sources for skulls and bones and that kind of stuff. All of the ones that I own myself, they have all died of natural causes and then someone has found the remains rather than the alternative. So I'm actually really, really happy with how the altar turned out. I'm still exceptionally frustrated by the way the cloth sits. It doesn't seem to matter how much I fiddle with it, how much I mess about with it, I cannot get the cloth to sit right because the tables are not square. <laughs> It's annoying as hell, but I can look past it for the altar itself and I'm actually really, really happy about it. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know that this video is going up literally in the midst of the Mabon season. I'm a little bit late on getting this video up, but I would love to know whether you've set up a Mabon altar. Have you celebrated Mabon already? Do you plan on celebrating Mabon in the next few days? And if you do have an altar and you would like to show it to me or share it to other people within the community, on the Discord server, we do have a section for sharing your altars. So if you have set up a Mabon on altar and you want to share it with other people within the community the link to the discord server will be down in the description box so i hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you do have any questions comments concerns video ideas or just want to chit chat with the community feel free to post a comment down below and if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video feel free to hit subscribe i do try my best to post magical content every single week so i hope you guys are staying safe i hope that you are enjoying your mabon celebrations if you choose to celebrate it and i will see you in the next video bye mm -hmm.